said, I'm David Allen. I'm the entomology advisor down in Kern County and responsible for insect management across all the different crops that we grow. And it's asked specifically to talk about porpyrifos use in almonds, what it's used for, why it's used. And um, I'm going to take a little bit of a, a historical perspective on it because the, the use of Lord's Man has actually changed quite a bit over the last decade. And just you know, a couple examples here of pests that you use Lord's Man for, or I should say chlorpyrifos and the other versions. Um, yeah, it has changed over time. If you actually go to the University of California's pest management guidelines, you'll see guidelines for nine different groups of pests that have Lord's Band listed as one of the products you can use. And you can break that down into 13 different species of insects. So it's, it's fairly complex. But I'll just kind of walk through these um, you know, fairly quickly here. And there we go. So the first one is pavement ant uh, and southern fire ant. And historically, there was a shift from flood to your, you know, flood to micro sprinklers. It's really when all this started. You know, back in the days of flood, you flooded the ants, not that big a deal. But with irrigation efficiency, what it needs to be these days, you're getting more and more ant problems. And Lord's Band was traditionally used close to harvest. So you go in, you spray it on the ground, it kills all the workers, and then when you drop the nuts on the ground, there aren't any workers to eat those nuts, and you can lift your nuts and you're good. Of course, the thought of spraying chlorpyrifos on the ground just before harvest and then knocking all the nuts on the ground is, you know, something frowned on these days. But um, fortunately, we've got a lot of alternatives now. So we have these new protein-based baits that are out there now. So that'd be like Clinch, the Steam Extinguish. Uh, there's a new one out this year, this Altravin from BASF. All these baits are very effective. They're applied early in the season. Long-term control of the colony, uh, including the queen. And basically, because of that, baits have been very widely adopted by growers. So this is an example of chlorpyrifos used to have a large role, alternatives have been identified by the industry, and they are very well adopted to the point that we don't really use it for this purpose anymore. We've moved on. Second pest here, San Jose scale. So historically, this was controlled through dormant oil and, and organophosphate, which could have been Lord's Man or Diazinon or something else in the dormant season on an annual basis particularly in the southern half of the state. Uh, during that period of time, there's very, very little biological control. Now, during the last decade, um, about the time I was starting my job, uh, about 10 years ago I've been on the job, is right when uh, you know, Walt and the rest of the clan were right in the middle of their PMA1, PMA2 projects. So these were the Pest Management Alliance projects funded through the Department of Pesticide Regulation, great buy-in from the almond industry, from the almond board, UC buy-in, and I always hate to summarize other people's research because I know Walt probably spent eight years or so doing this, but eight years of work and the summary is they showed you can manage San Jose scale without the broad spectrum insecticide in the dormancy. So eight years of work, I just summarized in one sentence, Walt. I hope that's okay. So, um, so they basically showed that, you know, boys, what's that? Slow. He's finally getting it. No, I'm <laughs> We're, uh, but these projects were very, very influential in showing what could be done. At the same time, Esteem and Centaur were both registered about the same time those projects were finishing up. Another thing that happened is that Guthion went away. So we got away from the Guthions and the broad spectrum worm products for naval orange and harvest. So all these influences coming together, the current situation is OPs for the most part have been removed from the dormant sprays. Um, and then, of course, as well as the whole split sprays, there's less and less there. Biocontrol has returned. It really has. I talk to a lot of growers, and they tell me, you know, they put on oil, oil, they go two, three, four years. The scale starts to build back up. Every three to seven years, they'll come in with one application, usually of seeds, but uh, Centaur will do the same thing. And that's based on monitoring. Of course, the monitoring is pheromone traps are for both the scale and for the parasitoids. So they're monitoring good bugs, monitoring bad bugs. Every three to seven years, one soft product. For the most part, uh, that's, what, you know, that's what most of the growers are doing. Uh, is there still some Lord's Band use in the dormant season for San Jose scale? <coughs> Certainly there is. Uh, it's a very inexpensive product, uh, so it has that advantage. Of course, as you get farther and farther in the south, you know, Kern County, we get six inches of rain. Um, so, you know, the thought of a big storm coming in and washing it off and moving it off sites, not the same as up, you know, north. Uh, likewise, we're on sandy soil. You know, any rain we get, it doesn't plug. It just, you know, it sponges into the ground. Um, if anyone can find a salmon in Kern County, I encourage you to let me know where it is. 
uh, but we, we've, we're a long way from salmon country. So certainly there is still some use in the dormant season. Um, there are alternatives though, and I think the industry is reducing that use every year as these alternatives are getting more and more adopted. Um, two worms, uh, oriental fruit moth and peach tree borer. Now this is where we kind of start divisions in the state. So in almond production, you really have, let's call it Eastern Fresno South. You have a sort of group of pests, or sorry, Western Fresno South, down through Kern. And then you sort of have Eastern Fresno up North. And they're kind of two regions, two different pests. OFM and PTB are more of a problem to the North. Um, this is a significant use of Morpirifos in the dormant season. Um, it can also be treated in the season with degree days. Now though, in the last you know, five or six years, we've got the diamites that have come along, so belt and altacore, and trepids around. The spinosins are excellent, um, so you know, delegate our success. And we really see, a, we've seen a great reduction in uh, Laura's band use for these two pests. And in the pest management guidelines from the university, for example, for OFM in the spring, there's six insecticides listed, and Laura's band is you know, sixth of the six options in priorities. Uh, for PTB in the spring, it's listed 9th out of 10, and the 10, I believe, is imidane. So, you know, really these have dropped because of replacements, and these replacements each year are getting more and more adopted uh, in place of floors uh, A couple of minor pests, uh, European fritillicanium and tree borers. This is basically bio controlled by biocontrol, listed on the label, not a big use or hardly at all. Um, tree borers, only on baby trees in the north. I personally have even seen it, but it's there. So a couple of pests, it's registered for, but not used for. So everything I've talked about so far, we've pretty much got alternatives. Um, you know, there's still some use there, but we're in really good shape. Then we run into our problem. Leaf footed bug and stink bug. This is our nightmare. Um, so historically, leaf footed bug and stink bugs were never seen. They were never a problem because we're using Guthian and Hull Split every year, we're using OPs in the dormant sprays, not a pest. And almond orchards were basically the, uh, the little guy amongst the world of cotton is king. Well, that has changed. And cotton is no longer king. Um, almonds have bought up most, you know, a lot of that ground. And our current situation is almonds now, instead of having cotton for neighbors, you're more likely to either have almonds or pistachios or pomegranates all of which are very, very good hosts for leaf-footed bugs and stink bugs. Plus, there's been a major reduction in OP usage. And so we've got the secondary resurgence of these pests, uh, particularly leaf-footed bug, and there's only really two control options. Uh, it's either Laura's band or pyrethroids. I, I can't tell you how many almond growers have come in and said, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of myself, you know, I'm adopting IPM, and you know, I've listened to Wald, and I've gotten rid of my dormant sprays, and, now I've gone three years without using a broad spectrum insecticide in my almond orchard, and then I got my butt whooped by stink bugs. Um, and that pattern seems to show, it's kind of a three years with a soft program, and these stink bugs build up. So, Lore's band, you know, every three years or so has become fairly common in season, just to knock those stink bugs back. And then leaf-footed bug, is migratory moves back and forth, is sporadic, but when it comes, you need to do something about it. Uh, this is just a picture of a uh, beautiful Kern County <coughs> Almond Orchard in 2006. Unfortunately, this picture is not during harvest. Okay, this picture was taken about the uh, last week of May, um, wow. first of June. So this is a month for Hull Split. Uh, so what happened here? This is leaf-footed bug. So leaf-footed bug migrates in. It just takes a little bite out of each of these, or a poke, if you want to call it, out of each of these nuts. The tree recognizes there's a problem with that embryo and it aborts it. There's a problem with my baby, it's gone. And so all these nuts, these are all nuts that in two, two and a half months should have been shaken and harvested. And uh, here's just an example here. If the leaf footed bug comes in in April, you get this shriveled kernel that aborts off the tree. If it comes in a little later, it causes this kind of damage. You know, May, once you get out of the kind of early June, the damage will look like this at harvest. Late June, you'll get these spots. Okay, these are, of course, all garbage. You know, this will get kicked out in the processor. And here's your healthy nuts. So depending on when it hits the nut, you'll get these different symptoms. So in 2006, we had, uh, so Kern County has a great almond variety trial. And leaf-footed bug has its favorites. Okay, when it goes to the buffet, you know, it picks its favorite food. 
And out there we had, you know, Aldrich, Butte, Carmel, Fritz, all these varieties out there. We just collected nuts, you know, what was on the tree at harvest, what got dropped by the leaf-footed bug, <coughs> what was damaged at harvest. We figured in this, uh, in this particular trial, which is fairly large scale, the Fritzes, you know, it was over $2,000 an acre in damage to those Fritzes. And by the way, those trees weren't nearly as bad as the picture I just showed you. So, you know, here's, you know, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars per acre of damage if leaf-footed bug is in high numbers and goes untreated. So that's, that's the big role of, uh, of, uh, of Warsman. So this is just Kern County, 2001 to 2010, showing the use. And you can see here, 2001 to about 2005, you know, we're about, uh, this year's pounds of AI, but pounds of AI is about acres treated. It's fairly close. So you figure 10 to 15,000 acres treated. This is, you know, basically one out of every 10 orchards. We have 100,000 acres. So on an annual basis, one out of 10 orchards gets treated. That's pretty darn good, considering this is a product that controls so many different pests. And everything was good, everything was good. And then 2006 was the year of leaf-footed bug. And over half our orchards were treated with, for leaf-footed bug in 2006. 2007, the bugs were still around. Plus, there's a lot of gun-shy growers that, you know, it's, it's a pest. I don't have time for the details, but it's hard to monitor for, hard to predict where it's going to come. So some of these were legitimate treatments. Some of these were just people scared out of their pants in the last year and treated. And then it's kind of subsided back down to where we've got this new norm here of about 40,000 acres. Um, by the way, that's important to point out that from 2001 to 2010, we've gone from 10,000, or from 100,000 to 150,000 acres. So this is higher than this used to be, but this is also 50,000 extra acres compared to what it used to be. So uh, some of this is just because of the increase in volume. But this seems to be kind of the new norm here on, uh, on Curtin County for pure fossils. And I remember when 2006 came, I got a call from DPR, and uh, you know they have their pesticide use reports. And the person that was doing these reports called me up, and they were freaking out. They said, you know, I don't want to tell my boss what I'm seeing here, so help me out. They said, you know, we've, we've invested all this money to try to use, reduce chlorpyrifos use in the state, dormant treatments, you know, the Sacramento River, we're doing all this work, and all the data is coming back showing that use is actually increasing. And these people were totally panicked. So the advice I gave them was, number one, break out Northern California versus Southern California. Because leaf-footed bug is only a southern half of the industry, Fresno, well, it gets up into like Stanislaus, but it's mostly Fresno, current, Fresno to Kern, that that's a problem. And so when you break this out, um, oh, actually, that'll be the next slide, uh, breaking that out. When you take all these pests and put them all together, and this is pretty similar to the, the chart you see back there, you get a little bit of dormant use. Okay, so this is peach fig borer, San Jose scale, is what it's going to be using. You got this peak here. This is mostly leaf-footed bug, but also stink bug. And then you got this peak here. There's people using it for naval orange worm, and in some cases, OFM. So that's where the peaks come from. And um, from a mitigation risk issue standpoint, um, you know, with, with Brian here talking about regulations, you know, of course, this winter dormant season is that's really when you're at the greatest risk of runoff and um, you know offsite movement through you know, through water. Of course, when you get in the summer, that's when you're more talking about more air quality, volatilization, um, you know, air, air blast sprayers going through orchards and trying to keep the bottom on site. So different issues at different times of year. So here's, here's what happens when you break it out by counties. And I just picked the five, top five counties um, for use in the state. You can see you've got Fresno and Kern, where it's kind of this low, 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 because you know, these are, by the way, the two largest acreage Counties. So the two largest acreages, you know, it's kind of down here low, leaf-footed bug, leaf-footed bug, and then we're kind of back to a new norm. But then, and then this is mostly in-season use. And then you get Stanislaus, Moderna, which said, there's about 10 more counties that all show the same thing, where you've got this sort of, you know, use through 2006. And this is really when all the dormant season educational programs started. And since that time, you can see in the northern half of the state, there has been this steady reduction use of chlorpyrifos, which is, you know, what, uh, you know, of course, what we hope to see, particularly those northern areas that are all in the you know, watersheds of uh, Sacramento River. 
So with that, summarizing the uses, uh, Lohr's band and almonds, effective against 13 different species of pests. Um, alternatives for a lot of these pests are very widely adopted. You know, ants, for example, you know, more and more of each big war. Uh, leaf footed bug and stink bug are the biggest uses for which there are no viable alternatives. Um, well, and, and you know, I didn't really point out that the alternatives to Lohr's band for leaf footed bug, the only alternative that's out there is pyrethroids. And so, you know, if you didn't spray Lohr's band, now you're spraying something like Brigade in April or May, which of course is killing your parasitoids for San Jose scale, which means you're going to want to have to go back to Lohr's band the next dormant season. It's also flaring your mites. So, you know, it's, it's a, so, you know, Lohr's band may not be the safest product, but at the same time, the alternatives is something that flares mites, kills parasitoids, and gets you on a pesticide treadmill you don't want to be on. Uh, I do consider Laura's Man to be a key component of resistant management programs. Uh, it allows growers to rotate among things. It is one of several options for scale of worm control. It is actually, I kind of did a mental tally here, it's the only broad spectrum insecticide left that's still registered that is not a pyrethroid and that does not flare mites. You know, when you think about Guthion and the Diazinon and the Imidans, and you know, we're kind of losing all that stuff. So it's really the only option left that doesn't flare mice that's still broad spectrum. Uh, this, of course, is, has huge value in case we get you know, brown arm rated stink bug, um, you know, any kind of emergency response program. It's nice to have one broad spectrum material that doesn't flare mice in the toolbox for when it's needed. It is expensive, of course, as a perk. And uh, I truly believe that there are mitigations available in pl and in place to address the environmental concerns. Of course, there's several of those. You know, Brian mentioned Spray Safe, which is, of course, a fabulous program down in our area, uh, initiated by growers to address this exact issue. Um, likewise, you know, sometimes growers will ask, well, what should I do for this? And they'll say, well, Lord's Band's an option. And their response is, ah, I'm within a mile of a river. I'm like, okay, no, it's not an option. Let's go. You know, the guys know that. Um, they know the river issue. They know the drift issue. They're sharp. And so I think these mitigations are in place. It's just a matter of making sure everybody's using them and using them properly so we don't get these hits in, you know, San Joaquin or whatever river these hits are, are coming on. So with that, uh, thank you very much.